ಮೂರ್ತಿ ವಿನೋದಕಾರಿ ಪಲಪನ ವಿಸರೆ ನಹಿ ಜೋ ವಿಸಾರಿ ಜುಗಲ ಚರಣ ಸೋಲ ಚಿನ್ನ ಜೇಹ ನಜರ ಸಮೀಪೆ ರಹೋಮಾರಿಯೇಹ ನಜರ ಸಮೀಪೆ ರಹೋಮಾರಿಯೇಹ ಘನ್ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀಜ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀಜ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಭಗವಾನ ನೀಜ supreme almighty our utmost dear gansham maharaj the path maker to our liberation our beloved puja guru ji puja bhagat ji and all of you devotees watching jai swami narayan the mandir or the temple can be said to be our home last year in winter workshop 2015 puja shri ji swami did a presentation on mandir and how the title was mandir is my home but in reality if we think about it when we come to mandir everything outside of the four walls we forget there's a magical vibe that's occurring in the mandir whenever we enter it we feel it all the outside world all our tension all our you can say sadness and misery of the day anything and everything tends to vanish when we enter the mandir The reason for that is because Bhagwan and Puja Santo reside there. Nevertheless, bhajan, constant bhajan is performed at that area. Due to that, the outside you can say illusion, the outside negativity of the world cannot affect the inside vibrations. The mandir is something more. to us because it helps us elevate our spiritual status the mandir is something more to us because it molds us as a person in society the mandir is something more to us because it helps us connect with god these three elements cannot be found anywhere else except in a mandir a true place of worship meaning a mandir is can be said to be many there is many mandirs out there but what is or where is a place which is suitable for my spiritual elevation it's where pure worship of bhagwan is going on nevertheless there is no encroachment or no negativity or no outside environment inside the mandir that's a true form of a mandir that's a true characteristic of a mandir meaning the outside world remains outside and in the mandir there is only bhagwan and his sadhus and his devotees in constant devotion is occurring but just like how when we come to mandir and slowly but surely we start to develop a minus for the mandir we start to develop that this is my mandir if you see some kind of garbage on the carpet you tend to pick it up and throw it inside the trash if you see some kind of mess you tend to clean it up if you see some kind of 
any kind of damage, you tend to fix it because you feel it's your mandir. You've developed some kind of minus to it. Slowly but surely, when a person comes into satsang, if that person has, you can say, good tendencies, they'll start to develop feelings of coming to mandir. It'll, start, it'll become a habit. And if you do not attend, even one week, you'd feel that you're missing something in your heart. That's how much attachment you would develop. Why? Because you like the environment. Bhagwan's darshan, Sant Samagam, and just the vibe, the divine luster inside of the mandir is something more to us. It gives us something more. But just like how we safeguard the mandir outside of us, do we safeguard the mandir within us? That's a question to ask. Just like how we clean up outside, meaning if you see some kind of trash or anything like that, you tend to fix it. If there's some kind of maintenance needed in the mandir, lighting or some kind of electric work or anything and everything, we tend to call someone to fix it. So our mandir in the outside stays perfectly maintained. In the same exact fashion, the mandir that's inside of us, meaning what is the mandir? Where Bhagwan lives. What I'm trying to say is the mandir which is inside of us, meaning mandir in the form of Bhagwan who is inside of us. Do we safeguard him? Do we take care of him? In this world, if you do not take care of a property, if you do not maintain it, the county or the governor, government or however or whatever official title uh, that can be applied to this matter it, or even a bank can take away the property because of the lack of maintenance because of the lack of upkeep they would think meaning in legal terms that if we take this property away from this owner due to the lack of maintenance we can hand it to another person that can maintain the property better now taking that example just like how we have a mandir outside of us we go to mandir every saturday do darshan we take prasad we serve others in the same exact fashion we have a mandir inside of us each and every one of us has a mandir inside of us and our mandir you can say is our soul and inside of that soul Bhagwan himself lives there if I can ask you when you don't have something expensive you're kind of tension free right suppose inside of your pocket you only have a wallet which only has five dollars nothing else and a couple of IDs and a couple of other small gift cards or something like that nothing that so much of value then would your mind be focused on your wallet no because you know that there's nothing inside of it but suppose that your dad gives you his credit card which has a balance of ten thousand dollars and has he tells you that spend it wisely then you would be very very focused on that credit card because now it has your wallet has value why because it has that ten thousand dollar balanced credit card and you know that you have the right to spend it because you have permission from your father but if we don't have anything we don't have tension but when we have something that is worth protecting that's worth keeping 
then we tend to develop some kind of, you can say, worry towards it, some kind of caretake, some kind of feeling to take care of it very much so. Now, we have attained Bhagwan Swaminare. We believe that He, and we know that He lives inside of our Atma. If He did not live inside of our Atma or in anyone else's Atma, how can He or she or anyone or anything, even a creature, move or be able to even do one single action? Proving that Bhagwan Himself, Bhagwan lives inside of the Atma. Now that very Bhagwan lives inside of our Atma, but we have to take care of him. We have to safeguard our mandir. We have to keep our mandir clean in every perspective possible. Just like how there needs to be vacuuming done in a temple or a mandir, just like how there needs to be dusting done, just like how there needs to be maintenance in plumbing and in electric, and it, just like how there needs to be fire alarm inspections and tests and alarm, and, uh, alarm tests and so on and so forth for a building, a commercial property that we transformed into a mandir, we call. Each and every detail we look after. We can even say that here at our mandir, Loyadam, New Jersey, we have annual tests, we have yearly test of by a biannual test of health and fire and we set alarms up um, you know like acknowledging us letting us know that oh we have an ins inspection coming up so we have to call the the company and have them replace the tags and so on and so forth we keep such minute minute you can say focus in uh, a focused vision on such small details, small micro details for the mandir outside. But do we keep that micro vision of cleaning up our mandir on the inside? Why? Because the only way we can develop the happiness of Bhagwan, the only way we can attain Bhagwan. The only way we can experience Bhagwan is if we maintain our mandir on the inside. You're probably wondering, how can I do that? Because whenever I close my eyes, I can't experience Bhagwan. Or whenever I even come to mandir and have the darshan of Bhagwan, I don't feel so great. Meaning, I don't feel ecstatic or I'm not getting anything out of doing darshan. What is the reason for all this? Well, it's because we have dust. It's because we have a lot of garbage that we need to pick up and throw in the trash. It's because we haven't vacuumed our carpet. It's because we haven't called our inspection for replacing our tags. Due to these very factors, we're not attaining or excelling or even getting the bliss of Bhagwan as it we're supposed to be. So you're wondering, how can we do this? Well, in that case, you don't have to worry. There's a small charitra of a small boy that has cleaned his or kept his mandir clean on the inside. And due to that, Bhagwan himself became pleased. Let's take a look in here. So there is a small young boy by the name by the name of Shalok Buggy. His father had planted melons in his farm. So his father was a farmer, and they planted melons, uh, cucumbers, and other melon types. Uh, and the boy decided that as soon as the melons are ripe, I want to take the first melon and offer it to Maraj. You know, it's very very pleasing to hear that our Loyadam Kishor, Kishors and Yuoks who attain new jobs what they do is for the very first paycheck that they receive they give to the Mandir 
to Maharaj. Why? So that their whole job in the future would go accordingly, Maharaj would become pleased. But just like how Shaluk Bagi said that he's pro his father has probably grown hundreds of melons, but Shaluk Bagi decided that I want to take the first melon and give it to Maharaj, that we should learn a lesson that anything that we do, we should put Maharaj and our Guruji first in any and every action. May it be going to school and taking an exam. Well, you're probably wondering how can that be possible? Well, on the examination, when you write your name above, you can also write Sri Hari. You can also write Puja Guruji or Guru Dev in memory of them, and also you can keep them with them with you while taking the examination. Not only that, but while talking on the phone or while getting a new device a cell phone or a tablet you can keep them with you how so by having a wallpaper of Maharaj and Guruji there's so many ways there's so many techniques but it's a matter of applying them that you can keep them first and keep everything else second now some tend to say that you know I keep them in my mind but in this age that's very difficult for beginners if we have developed a spiritual you can say level that would be easy but since not it's good to have such kind of techniques of listening to such kind of kirtans um, you know on your phone or using your tablet or using your devices like that uh, in the manner of using, uh, you know, putting Maharaj's wallpapers, so on and so forth. But I, I'm even reminded of Bhaktos um, that have done this task of, you know, getting their first uh, job and their first paycheck to Maharaj. I'm reminded of Neil Bhagat, New York, um, Krishal Bhagat, West Virginia. There's so many Kishores, but I remember them the most because it was such a recent, um, you can say, um, action that they performed but moving on Shaluk Bhagi decided he wanted to take the melon to Sriji Maharaj so in a short time the melons ripened the boy took one melon and left his home to offer it to Maharaj on the way there he was tempted by the sweet smell of the melon he thought let me eat this melon now that thought itself is dust inside of our mandir. Why? Because at first we thought that we were going to give it to Maharaj, which was a good initial thought. But there's always another side. Everything good also has another side which is bad. Due to after that thought occurred, Shaluk Bhagi had a thought of I want to eat this melon because it's right that's dust in our mandir now Marat says in the Vajtramu that we must remain at the gateway of awareness we must safe keep and be aware and in that Vajtramu Marat says last chapter 9th Vajtramu that my utmost senior elite santos stay at guard and stay at the gateway of of this you can say awareness and they have my darshan and they do not let anything inside what do they mean by that well this is all occurring inside of our heart anything meaning any kind of sobaos any kind of you can say any kind of maya they do not allow it to happen this was the great spiritual status of santos and that very spiritual status Maharaj is trying to imply imbibe inside of us that's why it's only right that we do come to the mandir outside and safeguard it and keep it clean but we should also keep our mandir clean on the inside by not letting anything in by not letting any kind of and examples such as we've heard them so much but examples such as you and your friends 
or your friends come and they call you and say that you want to go to the movies on one side you have the movies on the other side santos are calling you for mandir what do you do what do you do keeping your mandir clean that's going to mandir when santos call meaning that will not let anything bad inside it's just uh it's like an example of a kingdom and an army is coming to attack your kingdom but if your fortress is strong then no one can enter the kingdom and no matter how big of an army is if your walls are high then they cannot even climb over the walls or no matter how many arrows they shoot at the wall or anything nothing can happen in the same exact fashion shaluk buggy had a strong mind so let's see what happens now he thought let me eat this melon but then he remembered his decision his decision to offer it to maraj so he fought with his mind and started to walk again what a small boy and what a task what kind of understanding can this boy possess at such an age if we were in that position suppose it wasn't a melon and suppose it was a, a nice chocolate cake that we were bringing to maraj here at loyada mandir and it was inside of your car and you're driving or you're not driving your parents are driving and the cake is besides you in the back and you haven't eaten the whole day and you're just tempted that maraj is not going to eat this whole cake let me just have a small piece of this cake but in that situation what would you do if we kept our mandir clean then you would not do anything in just like shaluk buggy you would shut that th- thought down completely so again back to the story he remembered his decision to offer it to maraj so he fought with his mind and started to walk again he walked a big bit further and again the thought many people will offer many expensive gifts to maraj how much can it be compared to my melon let me eat this melon again dust started to accumulate you know i i just visited india i think a week ago now and there every day in kandari gurukul sandivas uh, the gurukul students meaning the school students um right there they had vacation would come every day and would mop and dust the whole sandivas why because if they didn't in india within 2 days you'd literally be able to see dust all on the floor meaning dirt very fine dirt but they kept such a nice job of cleaning that no matter whenever you went in the morning afternoon or night or even the next day it was always up to date and clean and it was their efforts they did it on daily basis a, sa- a a group of a team of boys they would do it every day fixed and they would keep the whole sandivas very very up to par very clean in the same manner in india if they didn't clean for 2 days dust would ac- accumulate then in our hearts if we don't clean not every day but every minute then dust would accumulate and shaluk buggy had just walked maybe a bit further and again a thought re- arised meaning again a little dust must have came inside of his mind there let's see what he does so many people offered very expensive gifts to maraj he thought then what is it compared to my melon let me eat this melon but he told his mind No no this melon is for Shri Ji Maharaj I want to offer it to him again he took his duster he took his vacuum and cleaned it up meaning he knows that bhagwan is living inside of him he knows that he wants to please bhagwan his intention is right from the beginning but this mind is such that it offers such kind of you can say sweet attacks that if we get tempted then we would lose the battle 
and her mandir would be become pretty much unmaintained and very very poor so he fought with his mind and throughout the journey on and off on and off meaning if the dust would accumulate he would clean it again on and off it would occur the all knowing shri ji maharaj knew of this intense battle the boy had courageously fought with in his mind meaning maharaj was living inside of his mandir inside of his atma inside of his soul maharaj knew what the boy was going through so let's see how maharaj reacts so when the boy reached vartal shri ji maharaj lovingly called him and asked for the melon he ate a piece and offered the rest as prasad to everyone in the sabha shri ji maharaj was extremely pleased with the boy and gave him 5 kilograms of sugar or sakar as a gift do you know why it was shri ji maharaj knew that the only he who battles with his mind can save himself from bad company and satsang and in you can say short keep a clean mind there shaluk buggy as a reward two things happen actually three things number 1 bhagwan became happy number 2 bhagwan ate his prasad along with the whole sabha so he also got the merits for bringing that melon all the way from his home to vartal and offering it to maharaj and the whole sabha and number 3 he got 5 kilograms of sugar sweets you can let, let's put it at you can say 50 cupcakes okay if we put it in the terms of right now he got all this just for keeping his mandir clean now you're probably thinking that you know in that time maharaj was around and shaluk bagi was there and he was going through this situation so of course maharaj would reward him but how can maharaj reward me right now if i keep my mandir clean meaning if i do not let anything from the outside world come inside my heart how can maharaj please or become happy on me how can i receive the merits of how shaluk bagi received the merits of maharaj and the sabha eating the melon what can i do well there's two roads to that first road is you can understand that maharaj also just like how 200 years ago he was touring india and various places when he manifested in his human form now maharaj is touring everywhere in in india and anywhere in the form of our puja guruji wherever and wherever puja guruji goes inside of him maharaj lives constantly he is there no matter what if we can experience or if we cannot experience if we can believe or if we cannot believe but it's a fact it's just a matter of us understanding believing and experiencing for ourselves but if we keep our mandir clean then the maharaj that constantly is inside of our puja guruji would become pleased and our puja guruji would become pleased and we would receive the merits in the same exact fashion as shaluk bagi did so in that fashion that's our first road the second road is that if we believe that maharaj is inside of me watching looking and each and every one of my actions we can also understand that he will become pleased if i keep my mandir clean if i maintain if i safeguard my mandir so it's very important in our life even as right now middle schoolers or even i can say elementary middle, middle schoolers or high schoolers or college students or even outside of college students that when we come inside of wherever whatever mandir we go to or whatever center we attend which has a siyasan i'm sure 
whether it, whether it be here in New Jersey or Macon, Georgia or Kentucky or Tennessee or Canada or Illinois or Florida or any other center that our Loyadam Parivar, our Loyadam family has. If we go to that mother, our local, you can say, center, we tend to see and imbibe the whole environment of a mandir or a center. We tend to keep it as our own. We tend to maintain it and clean it every time in and out in the same exact fashion. The mandir that's inside of us, the mandir of where Maharaj lives inside of us, if we want to keep Maharaj, then we must keep everything else around us clean. And if we do so, Maharaj will stay. And if we do so, Maharaj will give us bliss and we would be able to experience Him throughout our day, no matter what we're doing. It doesn't matter if we're doing the most heaviest task or if we're doing nothing. But it's Maharaj's duty to give us bliss if we keep everything maintained in our mandir. That's today's lecture. Saying that Winter Workshop 2016 is just around the corner. Registration is open on our website, theswamiran.org. Everyone is free to register. There is no registration fee for attending workshop. All you have to do is show up in the three days. It's here held at Loyadam Mandir, New Jersey. So anyone and everyone who is remaining to register, please do so. If you have any questions, you can email at loyadamnj at gmail.com. And we also have contact, more contact information on our website, theswamran.org. Please do attend. It'd be something different for all of those who are new or listening. If you haven't registered, please do so. Uh, it's going to be something special this time. They were celebrating the New Year's for the very first time here at Loyadam, New Jersey. For the past two workshops, uh, we had the Christmas theme. And now... Um, we're actually past Christmas and workshop is starting from the 30th, continue on to 31st, Christmas, uh, uh, New Year's Eve, and then New Year's Day on January 1st. So we can receive the blessings of Maharaj, our Puja Guruji, and uh, Puja Santo, and all of you participant Haribhaktos as well. So please do attend. Um, it's something worth coming to. Saying this, my humble. Jai Swamina.